he's not. It's because you're rejecting him. And that's exactly what Stephen says to those guys. So you guys know all about Moses and God, but you reject his spirit. You reject the Holy Spirit because you're stiff-necked and rebellious. And you won't admit you're wrong when you're wrong. And that's the problem. That's the thing. Goes on to say, There did we rejoice in him whose rules who rules by his might forever, whose eyes watch, keep watch over the nations. Let not the re rebellious exalt themselves. Bless our God, O peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard. Who has kept our soul from among the living and has not let our feet slip for you, O oh God, have tested us. You have tried us as silver is tried. You brought us into the net. You laid a crushing burden on our backs. You let men ride over our heads. We went through the fire and through the water. And you have brought us out to a place of abundance. You see there in the book of Revelations, the, the fire, the burning away of everything that causes sin, the, the, the burnt offering, the evilness and, and the wickedness of this world is God's burnt offering. It all goes to the fire. We even pass through it. Right? It's through the fire, the fire of life, the, the fire of God. This all-consuming fire of love, when we pass through it, what we just come out shining all the brighter. That's why when tragedy comes, those who are faithful in Jesus Christ are the pillar for the families of them who are experiencing a tragedy. Come through the fire looking good. And then we come to a place of abundance. Right? We see in the book of Revelations, after the fire, after everything, we come to the place of abundance. God's grace and mercy is abundance. And it's full. So how much grace and mercy does God got? It's eternal. We cannot know. We will never know. Because it's eternal. It, it never ceases. I will come into your house. With burnt offerings, I will perform my vows to you that which my lips uttered and my mouth promised when I was in trouble. I will offer to you offerings of fattened animals with the smoke of sacrifice of rams. I will make an offering of bulls and goats. Come and hear all you who fear God. And now he's saying, come here and let me tell you something. All right? He says... I will tell you what God has done for me. <laughs> what does the Holy Spirit come to testify to? Jesus Christ, who he is, and who, who is Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ is the atonement for our transgressions, or atonement for our sins. Jesus Christ is God. He comes to atone for our sins. What was our sin? We, we didn't believe God. So Jesus Christ comes in here now, you'll believe in God. And everybody who believes in me believes in God. Because I came from God. He says, this is what I'm going to tell you guys. This is what God did for me. I'm not going to tell you what I did for God. I'm going to tell you what God did for me. I cried to him with my mouth. And high praise was on my tongue. I cried to him with my mouth, and high praise was on my tongue. I did not cry to God bitching and whining and complaining, but with praise on my tongue. Thank God now. 
Thank God. I love you. And all that you've unveiled to us in life. If I had ch cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. If I cherished iniquity, and that's the thing with our life, does sin cause pain and suffering? Does cheating on your wife cause pain and suffering? Does murder cause pain and suffering? Does death and tragedy of a young child cause pain and suffering? Is leukemia to a 12-year-old child, your child, is that pain and suffering? If I would have cherished those things in my heart, the iniquity, the iniquity is the nature of man, the inability to stop sinning. Inability. Unable to stop. If I didn't cherish those things in my heart, you would not have listened to me. But truly God has listened. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. All right, we see in the book of Revelations, one of the first things they do is these guys come and these angels or whatever, and they have this great big pile of incense, and inside the incense is prayers. And they throw them right on the, 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 this giant thing that, that's heated up by coals and then and smoke begins to rise and it goes right to God this is exactly what Jesus come for so that you could have peace with God so that God and you could interact and this is the first thing Jesus does it is unlinquishes gives to God the prayers of this world the prayers, the answer. Jesus says, this is the gift I was given by God, that anything that you would ask me, God would give to you. And I went to him, took all the prayers of the earth, and there we see in comfort, Jesus places them right there at God's feet, at the altar. And then, blessed be God because he has not rejected my prayer or removed his steadfast love from me. We go through the book of Revelations and, yeah, I admit I, I was a sinner. Yeah, I admit I was deceived by the world. Yeah, I admit I, I was heading down the path to hell. But it didn't remove his steadfast love. This is what David is saying. Jesus says, here I have the key. David is saying, okay, when, when on, I went walking into the land of, of my fathers, and into Zion, when I was going to be judged, when judgment day came, he didn't remove his steadfast love from him. He said, May God be gracious to us all and bless us and make his face shine upon us that your way may be known on earth, your saving power among the nations. We see in the book of Revelations, God has white hair and he has eyes of fire. Shine your face me, O oh Lord. Even those who pierced him saw his face. Then bows down to, to the guy. No, no, we, we worship God here. Worship God. In God's face is your reflection. In your reflection, it is God's face. He says, if you love the least of the world, not the least of your church or the believers, the world, you loved me. My reflection is in your face, and your reflection is in my face. 
For, for we are one in him and, and he in us. Right? So you see, we want, that's why Jesus Christ, in the image of Jesus Christ, a picture of a man is of the devil. Because it takes away your place in that face. There's no room for you in that face, in that image. And then, then that's what he says, I hate images. Because I am spirit, and I'm a living God of the living beings of this earth. And all of you have a, a place in the image of my face. But if you continue to create images other than the image God made, you never believe in it. And you always live in weeping. You always live in gnashing of the teeth. And you'll never find love for another human being. Because you don't believe that, that, that the world can see Jesus Christ. Because it sees you. You don't believe that, that Jesus Christ could create a world that lives in him. Or her. He goes on to say, Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity. For, for you judge the peoples. I, I don't judge the peoples. This is him in heaven and Millions and trillions of people. You judge the peoples with equity. He says, And guide the nations upon the earth. He, he guides the nations upon the earth. All the nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, shall bless us. God shall bless us. Let all the ends of the earth fear God. God's going to bless us. Fear God, because God is going to bless us. And we see it in, in the book of Revelations that everybody was deceived by the mark and the beast, all the world. And he said everybody who was deceived by the mark or the beast was destroyed in the fire. David said, I wasn't destroyed. I went through the fire. I went through the water. And, and this is when I saw God didn't remove his steadfast love from me. I put my feet in a place of abundance. That's good news. It says God shall rise. His enemies shall be scattered. Those who hate him shall flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so shall you drive away them. As wax melts before fire, so the wicked shall perish before God. Do you see Jesus? First thing he does is all sin and wickedness and everything that causes death is thrown into the fire. This is what David's saying, this is what I saw. He, he threw it all in the fire. It was like smoke. It's nothing. It melts away. So the wicked shall perish before God. Same for us. When fire is manifested, you know, when, when, when you cheat on, on your loved one and you get caught, the fire comes out and the truth is known. God is love. He doesn't cheat. God cares for those he loves. He doesn't lie. 
when the truth comes out, we find out who we really are. When we find out this, without forgiveness, there's no chance for heaven. Jesus never removes his steadfast love. He says there in the first chapters of, of Revelations, you know, don't forget how far you guys have fallen. You, you don't fall from grace. You know what you were getting into when you accepted my, my salvation. I, I said this is rule number one to, to, to this now that you, you believe in me with all your heart, might, and soul. Love as, as I have loved you. Here we are, 2,000 later, going, man, how could Jesus love a people like that? And that's our own heart. We judge in the same way we, we judge ourselves. They're unworthy because I'm unworthy. And that's why I'm working the way to become worthy. To prove to you. I'm better than you. I'm more worthy than you. Jesus says simply love the least and you loved me. I think I spoke enough today. Granted, we, we didn't read much of the book of Revelations and we will, but I wanted to explain to you the key. Here's the key to David's visions, dreams, Psalms, songs, heart. He had a heart for God. Here's the key to David's heart. He saw the glory of the coming of our Lord. And so have you. See you next time.